two dynamic actors, two fascinating takes. Let's have some fun. I'm Jeff Savage, and this is Take Two. Welcome to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. In the world of voice acting, there's a joke that says, we must be a little bit crazy because we talk to ourselves in a padded room all day. Being a voice actor, though, takes more than just having a great voice, reading words on a page, or being able to do funny impressions. Today's pursuit of voice acting requires us to be more like small business owners, or savvy solopreneurs, if you will, being able to market ourselves to the right people at the right time. But what exactly is the life of the working voice actor like? Today, we are proud to welcome to set Kimberly Davis and Charles Coates, two Dallas-based uh, actors who run their own voiceover businesses from home. Kimberly, Charles, welcome to Take Two. Thanks so much, great to be here. Thank you. Thank very you. good, very good. I wanna start off by uh, you know, introducing you to our audience here tonight. Uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit about you know, yourself and specifically your voiceover business? Sure, um, like you said, my name is Kimberly Davis. Kimberly Lindsay Davis is what I use because I'm recently married. Um, so I thank you. I'm Dallas based and I have a voiceover business studio in my home. Uh, my company is called Voice Enhanced Digital Marketing. So you can find me at www.vedm.pro and I focus more on not just the voiceover aspect of it but also the voice business aspect. So that's something we'll talk about a little bit uh, later but that's that's where you can find me. Fantastic. Charles, same question to you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your voiceover business. Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Charles Coates. Charles H. Coates II uh, is my official name. Uh, my voice acting website is www.charlesthevoice.com and my slogan is leave the talking to me. Great, that's fantastic. <laughs> I that's like fantastic. it, I like it. So uh, as I uh, said in our introduction, you know, being a voice actor nowadays is, you know, it's, it's not like it used to be generations ago where you would have an agent and your agent would find you all the work. You would go into a studio and record and, uh, and meet engineers and producers. We all work from home nowadays in our own studios, but um, more importantly, we are running our own businesses and doing so. Specifically, how do you both attract customers to your voiceover business? Are you marketing to certain people? And if so, how are you doing that? <laughs> That's the million dollar question. You want to go first? <laughs> sure. So, you know, there was a coach that once said, voice acting is not, you have a good voice, so you're, you're a voice actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's you're a business owner that happens to voice act. And that's really true. You know, coming in from the beginning thinking, okay, I'm gonna get all this work because I have a great voice and quickly finding out that there are so many other factors um, in the voiceover business that there's pl pay to play sites uh, there, that are out there, there's freelance sites, there's marketing that you can do through email. Um, I do some with social media and you have to really understand that functionality and treat it as a business because if you don't, then you'll either get burnt out, you'll get frustrated, You'll see other people's success, not really know why they're succeeding, and you'll drop out of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I also think it's fair to say that uh, you have to know uh, where your potential customers are and, and where to attract them from. You, as a voice actor, you need to know who hires voice actors, what types of companies actually are the decision makers who you know, hire voice actors, whether it's video production companies, ad agencies, or, you know, videographers and things like that. Yeah. But uh, Sam, question to you, uh, Kimberly. Yes. How, so, do you, um, how do you attract customers to your business? So kind of like what you were just saying, you have to know your audience. You have to know who you're targeting. And so one reason that I've shifted from being to myself just a voice actor to being in business, one of my slogans is, what's the sound of your brand? So I am really focused on business to business. So I market to businesses most often because I do digital voice for them. So businesses are, everyone is trying to market on social media and they want commercials and they want branding. I work with 
businesses with my voice to offer them branding, to help enhance their brand. So I always ask my clients, what's the sound of your, your, your brand? Because you look good, you have on a suit when you go out, your website looks good, but what does it sound like when someone calls your business? Or when they click on your website, do they hear anything? So I'm focusing a lot on digital marketing for businesses. So that's, that's who I focus on. That's fantastic. And it's also you know, important to note that a lot of voice actors, they find a niche that, uh, that works for them. And, and Kimberly, you definitely have a unique niche in, in that regard. So that's, that's fantastic. Now, a lot of voice actors step into this realm having worked in other parts of the, you know, the, the working world, whether mm -hmm. it's corporate America or you know, being an actor on camera, moving into the voiceover uh, realm. Radio is a popular place that voice actors come from as well. But what are uh, some of the ways your previous work experience kind of prepared you for running your own voiceover business? Charles, I'll start with you. So I have worked at a couple Fortune 100 companies. And I worked as a learning and development program manager for training departments. I've worked with instructional designers. And I ran uh, training teams all across the globe. Uh, just recently, I worked with a, a very large airline here in, here in Dallas, Fort Worth. And I was a facilitator and speaker for all the new hires that came in on uh, day one orientation, uh, classes for all of the population of the airline, and specific leadership classes for uh, directors and above. And it really helped me to be able to speak publicly, to be comfortable, and to learn how to engage with people in a face-to-face in a -face environment, understanding how to say something so it really, it really gets them, it, it hooks them, it grabs their attention, and helps them to think, think of different ways. So basically, the way I said things would kind of dictate the dance of where I wanted this to go. And whether that's emotional, uh, you know, experiential, uh, something that connects with them. And the way that you speak to those people in the class and you tell stories, uh, you, the way you ask questions uh, really helped me prepare for voice acting because a lot of that emotion that you have to figure out in a script, uh, things like that really, really are paramount to delivering a, a very good uh, and well-rounded, well-spoken recording to the, to the client. Gotcha. Nice. Kimberly, uh, quickly, your, uh, your work experience in the past has prepared you uh, how so with your voiceover? And, uh... Two facets. I've done some work with having my own business prior to voiceover. So I had a cleaning business, commercial and residential, for six years. So that kind of helped me figure out how to get clients and how to market. Great. And then the other part of that was I became a an MC for events and a public speaker. Oh, fantastic. So I put those two together and it works wonderfully because I need those skills from promoting business and marketing as well as the skills from speaking in public. Great, great, great. Those are valuable insights. I invite you to stick around because after this break, we're going to put our actors in the hot seat for a fun improv exercise oh. that we call One Word Story. <laughs> stick around, we'll be right back. You know you need video. But maybe you think you have a face for radio? We've got you covered. Our roster of on-camera talent is ready to be your spokesperson, demo your product, or even be your brand ambassador. Need help with your video marketing strategy, content, or talent? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long-range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes Store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Make your product an internet sensation. Think with Google estimates 60% of the population prefers to watch online video content versus TV commercials. Need help with your video marketing strategy or content? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com.
Welcome back to Take Two. At this time, we go into our fun improv segment, and this time we are going to play a fun game called One Word Story. In the realm of voiceover in general, I'd like you to focus on, a, on creating a story, one word at a time, between the two of you, volley back and forth, with a distinct beginning, middle, and end. The fun aspect of this game is that it's very unpredictable what direction either of them is going to take the story, but uh, we'll have a good time. So I'm going to start us off. Once upon a time. A. Giant. Booth. Was. Sitting. In. Living. Spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Cramped. And. Lonely. But exciting and fun to work for speaking and reading to people that love to listen to my voice. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> you know, improv is such an important part of acting, and being that we are a talk show that focuses on acting community here in Dallas, it's always a fun element to incorporate into the Take Two uh, talk show format. So thank you for participating in that today. Yeah. You're wonderful. But, uh, I, had a, I had a very good partner. Yeah, very <laughs> nice, very nice. I enjoyed you. But being that uh, the voiceover community, uh, you know, features a lot of home studio working professionals. What are the challenges of working um, for yourself at home? Uh, do you keep a formal structure to your business day? Um, talk about that a little bit if you don't mind. Uh, Kimberly. It's great and it's difficult. Uh, for me, I don't have anyone else at home. I'm married and my husband is away at work. We don't even have pets. So I'm in the booth, I'm in, well my office is, is my studio, and I'm in there and I'm telling myself, plug away, you've got things to do, stay structured, but then I can go and wash laundry, I can go and water the plants, I hear my neighbor outside. So it's difficult a lot of days to really be structured and, and set the timer and do the things that I need to do. Uh, the wonderful part is all those same things, that if I need to get up and do something, I can schedule my day around what it is that I need to do. There's a certain flexibility yeah, that I love it. having a boss in an office mm -hmm. and brick and mortar uh, yes. place to go to. And pajamas, <laughs> working in pajamas is a plus. Hey, <laughs> for sure. 100%. For sure. Uh, Charles, uh, what challenges do you face uh, working at home uh, in your business? So I echo everything Kimberly said um, with adding, if you live in a neighborhood that is new construction, mm and there's still construction going on, you have to make sure that you take the opportunity for your moments uh, to go ahead and record. But really, it's really about discipline. It really is. Because you think you have all this time. In actuality, you don't. Because you will find yourself at 3 o'clock. And you'll tell yourself, wow, I, what did I accomplish today? And that's not a good, that is not a good thing to say to yourself. And so, you know, one thing I learned from a couple of groups that, I'm, uh, that I belong to with some uh, support voice actors is, was to really stick to a schedule. Mm -hmm. You need to get your marketing done. You need to get your auditions done. And you schedule time to do it. This block of time is the time that I need to get this done today. I love that. Yeah. And if you don't, you could get it done. But you could get a text from your friend, and you could mm -hmm. go down a rabbit hole on YouTube, mm -hmm. whatever the fact may be. <laughs> yeah, it happens to all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So discipline is really, really the key. And if you have discipline up front, you can enjoy the time that's after instead of scrambling and trying to catch up because you didn't set that discipline in the, in the beginning. You know, uh, Kimberly, you touched on this as well, but... As voice actors, we often work by ourselves, and we don't really have interaction with other people. Uh, do you find that to be liberating? Do you find that to be lonely, challenging? Like, how do you deal with that aspect specifically? During the day, day-to-day -day work, I, I find it wonderful. I enjoy being by myself. 
Um, it helps me to focus more on what it is that I need to do if no one is asking me to do something for them. So that's fine, but like Charles said, there are groups. Uh, I'm a part of a couple of groups as well. So we keep each other company, but we have a scheduled time where we speak once a week or twice a week for different groups and we download. We give each other what's going on, new leads, new marketing ideas, and it's a community. It's just like children who are homeschooled. They still need an outlet, and so as voice actors, we still need a community mm -hmm. of voice actors, although we're all at home. So I find that really helpful. You know, and the voice acting community is so welcoming and such a tight-knit group. It's kind of rare that, like, we get to do something that a lot of people don't know about or they don't even know, like they've never met a voice actor before right. and then they see it like, wow, that's such a great thing, but it can be a little bit lonely. Yeah. How do you deal with that specifically, Charles? So I am very, let's say I, I can talk to people in an elevator, random, ele like I like to talk and sometimes it's a little bit difficult for me because I want that interaction, but I have to, I have to, make sure that I'm not, if I do interact with somebody, that it's not going way overboard and I'm cutting into time for other things, cutting into their time because they're all so busy. And I have to keep mindful of that. But the times that, in the morning especially, it's very quiet, the wife has gone to work, the dog's been fed, the coffee's a-brewing, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good time for me to just organize, breathe and enjoy mm -hmm. enjoy the fact that i'm not stuck in traffic mm. yes. <laughs> True enjoy that. the yes. fact that yeah i'm not on a on an hour drive that could be driven in 15 minutes right. you know and on the way on the way back home also you know i get to eat lunch with my wife every day and you know i get that interaction time with her there but but it's it's twofold mm -hmm. you know gotcha. you have those groups that you connect with support each other then there is that that kind of nice time to yourself that you have. Yeah. Very good, very good. I want to give you both 30 seconds to tell our viewers how they can find out more about you. Um, Kimberly? So you can find out more about me on social media, all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, not on Twitter, uh, but you can find me at Kimberly Lindsay Davis on all social media. And my website is www.vedm.pro. That's Voice Enhanced Digital Marketing Pro. And check out that on screen uh, right below here as well. Charles, uh, how do our viewers find out about you? My website is www.charlesthevoice.com. And my social media is, my Instagram is Charles underscore the underscore voice. Uh, and I do have little breaks of fun time for myself and creativity uh, on TikTok. And that is Charles the Voice VO. Fantastic, fantastic. Kimberly, Charles, thank you so much for being a part of our show and uh, for your insights, and uh, we really appreciate it. Folks, thank you for joining us here on Take Two. My name is Jeff Savage. You can find me on Instagram at Jeff underscore Savage underscore B-O, and you can find uh, more about Sync Lab Media on all the social media networks at Sync Lab Media. Check out our YouTube channel and subscribe, and also see our uh, Sync Lab Media channel on Binge Network. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon.